Hello everyone, this is Ashish. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are having an interesting topic. It's a once in a decade kind of topic. Three things that I learned in my 20s and the reason why I can finally make it is because I'm no longer in my 20s. I just hit 30 and so we are going to talk about the three major things that I learned. Boil it down to just three most important things that I've learned. And another reason why I picked just three is because these are very well thought out. These are all tried and tested, not picked from any other self-help book, not any other YouTube channel. This is what I learned from my life. I spent five years writing this book, 15 drafts, and all of these three are mentioned in the book. And if I would not have thought it again and again and thought that, yeah, this is what I believe, I would not have put it in my book and I would not be discussing over here. Although these three have been mentioned in the book, they never got elaborated in the book. The reason is that this is not a self-help book, it's a fiction novel and I could not spend a lot of time explaining philosophies and ideas. So that is where my YouTube channel comes into the picture and I'm happy that I can explain it over here. I'm going to keep it quick just because I value time and that's what brings me to the first thing that I learned that is time is a resource. When you're in your 20s, you mostly complain about not having enough money, which is fine because you are not having enough money. But what you do not do and should do is appreciate the amount of time that you have and understand that it is just as much as a resource, if not more and better than money. You might not be that good at using this resource. It's just like when you get your first couple of paychecks, you're not that good at using your money or managing your money that well either. Just like that, you're starting fresh, you have a lot of time, you do not know where to invest it, how to save it, and that is what I want you to do. I want you to voluntarily make steps towards improving the skill, the skill of time management. Next time you try to solve a problem, try to shift your side towards the other resource that is time. How can you use time to solve this problem? Honestly, I believe that this is a more important resource and that is why my approach throughout my 20s and also will be in my 30s is that if I have a surplus money, apart from paying off my rent and whatever is necessary, I will invest that to gain more time and then invest that time to gain more reach towards what I want to get because I believe that moving fast is much more important. Saving and all will happen sooner or later. If you're working towards your improvement, you will be having money in future too. You can save in future too. Just starting your retirement plan in the early 20s, I don't think that is the best thing to do. All right, extract from the book, which mentions exactly this exact lines. Time is such a weird currency. It's more valuable than money. Young has it more than rich. Rich knows how to use it better. It will be spent regardless of whether you use it or not. Choices and Consequences, which is chapter 3. Page number 75 if you have a copy. Imagine your money being spent a penny a second and you didn't even buy stuff with it. I felt obligation to utilize time for my development and couldn't spend a second with four people without asking myself the question, how is this helping you to get closer to your goal? I kept hearing them talk about how they didn't have time while discussing the latest wine video while sipping tea and scrolling through Facebook. It was like flushing hundreds of dollars down the toilet while simultaneously complaining about not having enough money. With that said, we are going to move to decision making. It is easy to get overwhelmed, especially in your early 20s, especially because everybody is telling you whatever you choose now is the rest of your life. This cannot be farther from the truth. People change their career all the time, happens, possible, you can do it too. And uh, nobody knows what is the exact correct decision. It's not written in stone. I've discussed this in much more detail in my TED talk on FOMO, fear of missing out. I'm going to leave the link down below. But what I have not discussed and will now is that most people misunderstand decision making. Although some level of analysis and study is required to make a correct decision, but too much of dwelling on decision is not good for you too. Like in your 20s, you need to make quick decisions and move fast. And that is going to happen if you make a lot of decisions. And so you're not going to get good at making decisions by standing over there and having paralysis by analysis. You're going to learn how to make quick, good decisions by making more decisions. You're going to make mistakes, but over time, over iteration, you understand, okay, how you make good decisions and you will have to learn that. So we are not talking about quick and stupid decisions. We are talking about quick and logical decisions, making more and more decisions and learning from them. Two important things that's going to remove the paranoia that comes with decision making. Number one, no decision is perfect. 
no matter what path you choose there will be hurdles and that is why you should be more than ready to deal with those hurdles after you make the decision so most people perceive decision making is like oh this is the perfect decision so that the rest of the path is like super smooth but that is never going to happen that's not how it works one problem of just dwelling on decision solved the second one no decision can be ever wrong the result of a decision depends on the set of actions that you take after you make the decision and that is well within your reach and that is why nobody can give you a right decision because it's the actions that is right or wrong and that is something that depends completely on you so eliminate this misconception that one decision is going to put me in a right path or a wrong path a decision just puts you in a path how you lead that path decides it is right or wrong at the end of the whole like path <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so this one is the best explained in the epilogue that is at the end of the book so don't worry there will be no spoilers and that's when i realized i have a story to tell i had a story not because i was an idol as you can see i made a lot of stupid decisions in just one year that this book spans i made some correct ones as well some easy ones and some tough ones but correct or wrong tough or easy what matters is they were my decisions which made my life mine which in turn gave life to my story now third one failures i want you to try a lot in your 20s you should be trying a lot throughout your life i believe i'm going to be trying a lot in my 30s too but definitely compulsorily you have to try a lot in your 20s which means unfortunately as it might seem right now you are going to fail a lot and thus you have to learn how to deal with failures one common misconception about failure is that failure means that you are not worth anything or you're not worth that particular thing and success means that you're remarkable and and you should be cherished or celebrated success and failure both are the same thing both are just experiences that's it a success can make a person a failure can make a person too a failure can break a person a success can break a person too that happens all the time people ruin their life right after getting something they always wanted to get strong humans are made out of successful moments strong humans are made out of humiliating failures as well it depends on the person depends on how he or she deals with that particular experience and i want you to deal with failures positively because it's going to happen doesn't matter what you want to do you are going to fail multiple times before you achieve that and so you have to be ready for that i know it is painful like you cannot be a saint when you fail you are oh girl like brush my shoulders and move on that does not happen but what happens a lot is after a failure it just uh, stagnates a person i don't want that to happen to you if you fail doesn't matter you keep moving you fail you keep moving you succeed you keep moving and the best thing about failures is that well you can fail n number of times you just have to succeed once i mean i failed at getting into indian space research organization as a scientist two times failed in two entrance examinations i cracked it in the third attempt did i have to crack it twice no sir just once so that's all you need to understand you just have to win once and failure just keeps on teaching you again and again so learn from them again picking up something from the boy who did not sign page 157 this is really going to hit hard no spoilers but yeah this is the best one that's why i saved it for the last so in this particular scene ashwin takesh is broken and then he walks to the beach and he's all alone 6 o'clock in the morning and yeah that's where he realizes these particular lines these are not from the point of view of a narrator but from the internal thoughts that's going on in the head of ashwin nobody remembers the second man on moon Failures are not remembered. Failures are ignored. Losers don't matter. Well, this has a bright side. If you fail, people will forget about you pretty quick. That means they'll forget about your failure as well. I wonder why people are so afraid to fail then. I wonder why then they are so afraid to go for what they really want. You are literally getting millions of free opportunities to fail. Life is like a video game after all. You do get a replay button in life. You can fail in a hundred attempts at it. and it was never lost in the history books you only have to win once and that will be recognized pretty fair if you ask me and that is why the name of this chapter is uh, you do get a replay button in life it's chapter 6 so 
that's not it. <laughs> I have a bonus tip for those people who stuck till the end. I want to quickly talk about relationships and I have to. I did not want to. I have to because no matter who you are in your 20s, you are going to be stuck in some relationship dynamics or the other at some point. Until unless you found your soulmate when you were 18. That's a different deal. But most people are going to struggle with it in their 20s. In short, I will say, don't chase a person after a breakup. Don't chase a person into a relationship. Don't chase a person in general. If a person is interested in you, then he or she is going to show that interest and is going to be equally moving towards you as well. And that's where nobody chases anybody. It never makes anybody like you more if you're just chasing after them all that I want to say over here even though a huge percentage of my book is the lead character Ashwin just chasing a girl Simmer and you want to know what happens go ahead and read the book if you haven't already available everywhere ebook and paperback globally available links will be down in the description box and that's about it thank you so much for your support from the bottom of my heart I don't know why you actually say that what the bottom of her heart looks like but anyways i'm really thankful i started this youtube channel when i was 23 i exited my 20s in front of you guys and uh, that means that this youtube channel was a big part of my 20s which also means that you guys were a big part of my 20s thank you so much for your support the truth is that i learned a lot from you guys just like some of you guys might have considered that they have learned from this YouTube channel. And that's why I keep working on this community, just doing it for fun. And thanks a lot. Again, even though I said it like five times already. So I'm going to end this video now. See you next time. Till then, bye.